Uh, so once the once the fish is hooked, now we're going to talk about how to uh, how to fight the fish once the fish is hooked. Tarpon have a really hard mouth. There's no teeth. They're like striped bass. If anybody's from up north, striped bass have cartilage. Uh, it's pretty similar that way. Um, what I like to do is I like to keep bend in the, in the rod. I like to keep, this is just my way of fishing. I like to keep the rod up at this angle here and I like to keep bend in the rod. Now, we, we uh, are anchored up and we bring the fish to the boat. This is man versus fish. So we're pulling and then reeling down. We're pulling and reeling down. Okay, pulling and reeling down. But notice, I never let slack in the line. If you let slack in the line, then there's no pressure on the hook. And I'm telling you, I have seen fish. I had a, I had a guy on my boat in January, he fought a fish for 40 minutes. We got it to the boat, and I went to take the hook out, and it just dropped right out. After 40 minutes of fighting them, then it was a big, big fish. You never know. We've seen hooks drop out five feet away after fighting a fish for 30 minutes, like okay? The other thing is, um, there's a, a technique a called bow to the silver king. When tarpon jump, you wanna put slack right. in the line. Right. So you drop the, the pole right away and put slack in the line. If he runs that way, then you, you stick, extend your arms, okay? As soon as the jump is over, go back and get that tension on the hook again, okay? You gotta tire the fish out. So initially, he's gonna take a lot of line. He's gonna be pulling on a lockdown reel. He's gonna be wearing himself out. Jerry calls it rope it though. Then, once he does his initial run and expends a lot of energy, then you can start bringing the fish to the boat. The fish have to swim forward. They always swim towards their head. So what you wanna do is you wanna, watch your head there, you wanna steer the fish. If the fish wants to go that way, you go the opposite way. And, and Turn that body and turn that head. Okay, if he goes that way, you want to point the pole the opposite way. I like to keep the, the pole from from this point here. I pull back and reel down. I like to think about 45 to 90 degrees. I don't like to let the pole get down here because now the pole isn't doing any work. It's all straight on the on the reel. Okay. I like to think of the pole as as a shock absorber. And a lot of times a fish will kick his tail and he does a sudden jerk like that. So we have a 50 pound, 50 pound mono, we got a drag set right, and we got a pole that's bending. It's all big shock absorber. Okay? If you're tired or you're young, you're young, back up, back up. Oh yeah, yeah, that's another thing. You, you can, uh, instead of using shoulder and arm muscles, you can reel forward and you can use your leg muscles and back up like this and, and walk forward. See, I'm not using any, any arm muscles at all. The ladies and the young kids who don't have the upper body strength, it's a great technique. You walk backwards, reel forward, the same as pumping and reeling. But you're using your legs and the kids are not getting all worn out. Your legs are the biggest muscles in your body, so use them when you can. Uh, I like to use the belt. Uh, Jerry doesn't use a belt. John Nestor doesn't use a belt. I caught my first tarpon without a belt. Never doing that again. Okay? It was not good, let me tell you. Okay? It was a really exciting day, but the amount of physical pain my body experienced was memorable. So I always use a belt. It's comfortable. I got leverage. I can pull. I can pull on this on this pole. And it's really, it doesn't hurt. I don't want any secondary pain in my